for a second. What do you see on social media? Inspirational quotes, cute animal videos, or maybe even tag memes. However, for many young girls, especially those from the age of 13 and 14, they often see videos of women portrayed as pretty and perfect, showing their morning routines and talking about their beautiful lifestyle. Now, they also show their clean aesthetic, clean girl aesthetic. That's what it is. Their slick back hair, their perfect skin, all shown in this starter pack. So, let's go through what it is to be a clean girl. So first, you start off with your Starbucks green tea latte, which is way too overpriced. Then, you head to your Pilates class at 6 a.m. And finally, after coming back from work, you finally start to study. And then, you go and finish your skincare routine after a long day and go to bed at 9 p.m. sharp. Super realistic, right? Well, of course not. Yet, every day, girls strive to portray similar ironic lifestyles, which are preconceived to be perfect. But ultimately, these make these women perfectly miserable. It's clear that there needs to be something done about the way that we see flaws in society and the idea of perfectionism. So, we'll start off by talking about perfectionism's harmful impacts on women, its in various influences in society, and finally, some solutions we all can implement to eliminate this toxic mindset. Now, what exactly is the term perfectionism? Well, the American Psychological Association defines perfectionism as the tendency to demand of others or of oneself an extreme high or even flawless level of performance in excess of what is required by situation. Perfectionism demands achievement, approval, control, and many other desires. And while none of these are inherently harmful, an unhealthy obsession with sustaining them can be. As Elie D. Cohen, PhD and author of Making Peace with Imperfection says, the sky is the limit and you shoot for the stars, but you don't demand that you reach them. And there is no doubt that ambition and hard work is healthy and even necessary, but when we expect perfection from ourselves, that's when it becomes the issue. And this causes women to set unreasonably high standards, which often risk their own peace of mind. And unfortunately, after all this pressure builds up, it can ultimately lead to mental illnesses, such as eating disorders, anxiety, depression, and so much more. Anxiety is one of the most prevalent symptoms of perfectionism regarding women. To them, it's an inner destructive voice that fills their own head, which convinces them that their worth could somehow well they feel a respectable in society. And if they don't achieve their high standards, they often feel anxious and even apprehensive of themselves and their own abilities. And with the aesthetic portrayal of teens and women circling the internet, peace of mind suddenly becomes a lot more difficult to obtain than a simple $8 cream tea latte. Well, if perfectionism has so many harmful effects, then why has it been glorified by society? Well, an example of this is through Shakespeare's piece, Who is Sylvia? in the play The Two Gentlemen of Verona. At the end of the piece, Shakespeare writes, Sylvia is excelling. She excels every moral thing. I mean, other characters in the play, such as Valentine and Proteus, say that Sylvia is a beautiful saint that is perfect and divine. However, her own father says that she's stubborn, disobedient, and lacking of beauty. What? Well, the 
these two perspectives on the same character show that her true self and her image is always in conflict. She had to protect her image. And this influence of protecting her image pervades more than just Western cultures. It also pervades my own South Asian culture. As an Indian American, I've seen the recurrence of high and specific standards used to protect one's image. Whether it be your appearance, your personality, your achievements, your mental state, etc., it's always used to protect oneself. And seeing family and friends try and achieve this is tough to see them struggle and be miserable to try and maintain a perfect image. It's always the question, what will others think? As if I should be blamed for not being perfect at everything or being the best at one thing or another. So, what can we do to put an end to this toxic mindset? Thankfully, over the years, people have started to come out about their experiences and talk about how toxicity has impacted them, specifically with perfectionism. So, I'd like to share some solutions that I've found on the internet. But before I start stating them, I'd like to give a little disclaimer. All of the solutions I'm about to propose are easier said than done, but with enough time and patience, I believe it's still possible to eliminate the presence of toxic perfectionism. So that's why I invented a three-step process inspired by Oregon Counseling's 10 Ways to Overcome Perfectionism. So, step number one, reflection. I mean, the only way we can truly change ourselves is to actually be aware of our healthy behaviors. Sinful things such as journaling your thoughts, keeping a mental note of your experiences, or talking about them to anyone are various ways to help us evaluate our own toxic habits. Oregon Counseling adds up by stating, once we are aware of how we allow perfectionism to take hold of our lives, we're more able to alter our self-talk around this issue. And that leads us to step number two, action. Understand how your experiences of perfectionism affect you. So whether it is the pressure you feel from others, your own self-doubt or fear of failure, or even a mix of both. Change your self-talk attitude to promote forgiving yourself daily. And hopefully over time, you'll learn to understand your own mind and how to create the cycle of striving, making mistakes, and most importantly, learning from them. A healthy cycle of growth. And finally, step number three, and in my opinion, the most important, helping others. And this step is all inclusive, whether you yourself struggle from toxic perfectionism or you know someone who does, just hear them out. They all have their own unique hardships that deserve to be heard, so the least that you can do is just listen. Recommend them various sources, lend them ear, they have shoulder to cry on, because at the end of the day, they were never broken, just human. So through our various solutions and through our mini blog, we've come to realize perfectionism's harmful impacts, its various influences in society, and some solutions we can take to eliminate this toxic mindset. Throughout history, perfectionism has been viewed as something that's positive to show someone is a high achiever, but through multiple examples that we have shown, we've proved that this is quite a toxic behavior that needs to have an end to it. So, to put it into the wise words of Dr. Ann Shape, perfectionism is the self-abuse of the highest order. Thank you.